York Knicks are back in the win column. They are now two games above 500 as they sit at eight and six on the season. And their first win streak of this year's campaign is underway. They've won three in a row. They go three and one at the home stretch. And now they are off for their West Coast stretch. They got a couple of tough games coming up. But the New York Knicks, they got some good news in this ball game. They continue to show that they can win in different ways. But the best news of all is they get a win. They dominate a team they're supposed to dominate. It's a wire-to-wire -wire win. It's belt-to-ass. And they show you that they are the big dogs. And when they play an inferior team, they are able to take advantage of them and blow them out. You win by 28. It was never even really that close. This game was up to, I think, 34 at one point. You shot well from three. You shoot 50% from beyond the arc. I love the perimeter defense. Yes, Washington missed a lot of threes, but I also thought the pressure on ball caused them to shoot only 33%. Once again, I love the playmaking by the Knicks. 30 assists, 37 assists, excuse me, on 51 made buckets. Nice to see that. More good news, though, for the Knicks. Continues to roll in. Bacom Dottier is looking like a guy that can eat up some minutes for you off the bench as you are currently thin at that wing position. He gives you nine points tonight, goes three of six from three. He shows you he's ready to come in and shoot the ball. He's able to knock it in from distance. I like the way that he moves his feet on defense. He does a good job, I think, of keeping the ball handler in front of him. But overall, man, if Bacom Dottier can come in and be a contributor for this team, played 17 minutes tonight. That's going to be big for you because you don't need Josh Hart, OG, and Obi and Mikhail Bridges all playing 40 minutes a night every single time, especially on a second half of back to back. If you could just get Dottie A to eliminate the mental mistakes, continue to improve, earn that trust of to Tom Thibodeau, that's going to help this team out a lot. Huge news that he's showing early signs of being an NBA player after we thought he might have been years away. Another huge positive for the New York Knicks has been the addition of campaign to this basketball team. The Knicks last year struggled mightily out after the Emmanuel quickly trade when Jalen Brunson would come out of the game. They didn't have a point guard that could run the show. They didn't have a point guard that could set the table. They didn't have a point guard that could push the pace, get out and transition, move and groove, swish and dish. They didn't have anybody like that. And now they do in campaign. I don't want to overreact to a game against the Wizards, but this isn't the first time that we've seen Payne kind of take over a ball game. When the Knicks went on that 17-0 run against the Bulls, I think it was, campaign was in the game. Brunson was on the bench. So we are seeing that the Knicks have a quality backup point guard that can give you results when he needs to be thrown in. He has been money from downtown this year, shooting 83% in tonight's game, and he's over 35% for the season. There's not a shot he doesn't like. And there's not a pass that he loves. But he had 17-7 and seven tonight. Big night for Mr. Campaign. I'm extremely excited about that. I also loved what I saw from a couple of other Knicks young players as well. First, though, I want to hear from you. Your number one takeaway from the game. My number one takeaway would probably be Pacom Dottier playing well. But I also want to give major love to Campaign. And I also want to shout out the people that are in the starting line and making the big bucks and they took care of business, and they handled what they had to handle in an extremely early fashion, and it set the tone for the remainder of the game. But give me your number one takeaway for the Knicks. Brunson got back in his bag tonight. This version of Brunson is so encouraging. I was talking with Smitty during the game. This is the first time I feel like in any level of basketball, going from high school to college to his first stint with the Mavs as a sixth man, to then being a starter, to then moving to the Knicks, being the engine, the fuel, the tank, the driver, everything for this Knicks offense. This is the first time in Jalen Brunson's basketball career where he doesn't have to score. And they actually need him to be more of a point guard and more of a floor general and more of a table setter and more of a pass first guy. 11 more dimes tonight, and you can start to see Jalen Brunson sniffing out these passes having fun passing the ball, making some creative passing, testing his passing ability. Love what I've seen from him as a point guard. Hasn't shot all that well from three, but he got it going in that third quarter. I think it was three straight possessions. He had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back triples. Need him to get that shot going. He had an and one three in the corner. Loved seeing him play off ball as well. 
This evolution of Jalen Brunson might just be his best yet. He knows he could score, but he knows that if this team's going to be great, he needs to set the table and let his young guys and his big guys feast, like Carl Anthony Towns, who. Every game I watch this guy, I walk away impressed. Every time I watch Carl Anthony Towns play, I see him do something that I've never seen a player at his size do. You want him to trail and transition and hit a three? Good. You want him to rip through, put it on the deck, one, two, get to the lane like Giannis? He could do it. You want him to work with his back to the basket and show you great offensive footwork, draw the foul, lay it up and in. You want him to crash the offensive glass, clean up the mess? He could do that. You want him to stop and pop from 18? He could do that. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most skilled big mans in the game on the offensive end, and I love that he's a New York Nick. That one-two punch of Brunson and Cat continues to grow. They continue to trust each other, and they continue to learn each other. And there were multiple possessions where they executed the pick and roll and pick and pop to perfection. If those guys can continue to challenge each other to get better and better and better and build more chemistry, that's a one-two duo that not many people in the NBA can stop, if anybody. We'll talk more about this game coming up in a second. But first, I got to give a major shout out to our proud sportsbook partner, DraftKings. Use the promo code NICKSCHAT, bet $5, and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. The Emirates NBA Cup is here. You can win big getting in on the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All 30 teams split into six groups every Tuesday and Friday playing for the right to advance in the single elimination in-season tourney, culminating in the NBA Cup Championship in Vegas. First time, here's something special just for you. New DraftKings customers bet $5 to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook. Every point counts. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code NICKSCHAT. That's code NICKSCHAT for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash bball. Shout out to DraftKings, our proud sportsbook partner. Unfortunately, Smitty same game parlay did not strike the gold that we struck last night against the Brooklyn Nets. But over 233.5, I was pretty sharp there. That leg hit. OJ and OB still a little bit ice cold from three-point range. Only hit 104. We'll talk about him in just a second. And Bilal Koulibaly actually didn't play in this game, so that leg got rebooted, did not count. It just became a two-leg Smitty same game parlay. But if you're going to gamble, do it responsibly and do it at DraftKings. Use our promo code NICKSCHAT and get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. couple of quotes from Tibbs that I thought stood out in the post-game show were the guys are getting into a good rhythm and the chemistry is good when talking about the 40-point first quarter for the New York Knicks. Said he thought the cutting was decisive and good. He also said on Jalen Brunson, the aggressiveness was huge to set the tone to, to begin the game. And he said that campaign was a catalyst for the New York Knicks tonight. I love that word. Catalyst. Um, catalyst baseball bat? Anybody use that in Little League? I know I did. Back in, if you're a 94 kid, you probably used that. If you hit dingers like I did. OG Ananobi. It's just so fun to watch him play basketball, man. He wrecks the game. He's a margin guy. But also, he's a superstar in his role. I'm not going to call him a star player. I'm getting close to calling him one. He might be an all-star this year, but he is a superstar in his role, which is to cause havoc on defense, shoot threes, be efficient, attack the basket, and just impose his will on a basketball game, and he continues to do that for the Knicks. My favorite storyline this year, though, for the Knicks, I know Cat's been fun. I know a lot of things have been fun, and there's been things that haven't been fun, but my number one storyline is Josh Hart. We saw Josh Hart look like one of the best players in the NBA in the playoffs last year. He's carried that over into this year. His ability and willingness to shoot the outside shot is going to propel this Knicks team to new heights. He's also almost running the point guard at times for this team. A light night for Hart at 14.6 rebounds and three assists 
40% from three, 66% overall from the deck. He's a captain. He's improving on offense, and he continues to just grow and do things in new ways that every game I just say, man, that guy is a hell of a basketball player, and we're lucky to have him. Got to have heart. Mikhail Bridges. I thought he played good on defense. I thought he moved his feet well. He continues to improve as a playmaker. Five dimes tonight for Bridges. I love it when they go into that little high elbow or elbow extended where he works out in the post from the mid-range. He's able to get to his shot when he's matched up on a smaller defender when they move a wing defender onto Brunson and they try to hide that guard defender onto him. He's getting more comfortable taking advantage of that matchup. I love the movement that he's showing off ball. He's moving, he's getting screens, he's curling, he's cutting. There was a couple times tonight where he came off a down screen, curled around, caught it, and rose up, and he almost looked like Rip Hamilton from the elbow. He has been money in the mid-range this year, still needs to improve from three. That's one thing that I'm worried about with him. The new shot, it looks money from the corner, but I don't feel like he's generating enough pressure on the above-the-break threes. Not a shooting coach, just using my eyes, and my eyes tell me that he misses short every time on a three-pointer. That is not uh, in the corners. And it's a line drive. He's got to get more strength on that. Use his legs a little bit more. I feel like he's just trying to flick it. Um, again, not a shooting coach. Just what I see. But overall, a good game for Bridges. I mean, the guy goes 7 to 10 from two-point land. We'll take that. I've been very critical of Jericho Sims. I've been very loud about him being a terrible basketball player. And not him not having NBA stuff. He leads the NBA in defensive field goal position. Uh, field goal, defensive field goal percentage inside the restricted area. He had a couple more shots tonight that he affected. I thought he had an amazing dunk. Smitty tried to say it wasn't big time. Hung in the air. All, it kind of looked like the, the Kmart version of DeAndre Jordan back on the Clippers. Hung in the air, caught a body, and threw it in Dwight Howard style in the dunk contest. Moves his feet. Makes you more switchable on defense. And he had seven points tonight and seven boards. Hats off to Jericho. Loved what I saw as well from Tyler Cook when he got in the game. You legitimately have three point guards that could come in and make a difference. Brunson had 26. Payne had 17. That's 43. And Kolick had 48. F five, five, that's 48. And then you have three dimes. 11 dimes, 14. 48 and 21. Four, unless If my math could be off, I'm no math petition. But 48 and 21 from your point guards tonight. We've been in point guard hell as an organization my entire life. You got three guys that can run the show. Love that. Good game overall. Um, not really any minutes for the bench outside of garbage time for Ariel Huck Porty and Matt Ryan and Jacob Toppin. But it looks like the guys in the rotation off the bench right now are Dottie, Sims, and Payne. You also saw Kolick give you 17. Knicks, I thought the defended three-point line well tonight. They made the shots they were supposed to make. The offense is starting to come together. The cohesion, the trust, the setting each other up. Um, they're starting to heat up, man. They're starting to heat up. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's go beat Phoenix. Last time you played in Phoenix, Jalen Brunson had one of the best basketball games by a player I've ever seen in my life. I think it was 9-9 nine nine from 3 in that game. Hopefully he could do it again. Make sure you are following me on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Hit me up over there. If you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up icon on the way out, and let's go Knicks.